Tonight, I'm gonna to be reviewing a telescope that I've spent a lot of time with, the AstroTech AT-115 EDT. I've had this telescope since March of 2023, and I've shot a lot of stuff with it. I really have, I shot a lot of stuff with it, and I wanted to know just how much I've shot with this telescope. So I looked over all my images that I have. I kind of got into Excel and uh, I just really nerded out and I, I added up everything that I, I took with this telescope. So far, I've taken about 131 hours of integration time. I'm gonna showcase some of my favorite images I took with this later on, but let's start with some of the notes of why, well, personally, why I bought this telescope and why I think, you know, if you're watching this video, you're probably interested in buying this telescope. First off, it has a 115 millimeter aperture. That may seem really obvious. I have a Red Cat 51. That was the only telescope that I had. So I was looking for something that had a little bit more reach to it. And I wanted something in the 100 to 130 millimeter range. And this telescope, well, it had 115 millimeter and it just seemed perfect. Even 100 millimeter to me, I just really wanted to step up from 51 millimeters to something a lot larger. So I want to talk a little bit about its dedicated reducer. Now this dedicated reducer is a 0.8X reducer that's made from AstroTech just for this telescope. It brings it down to 644 millimeters at f5.6, which is a really nice focal length and it works great on my ASI 533mm. One of the nice things about this and it kind of was important to me because I knew I was gonna need a reducer because I was shooting astrophotography and I wanted to make sure that I wasn't gonna have a reducer that I'm gonna to have to fiddle with and just, I don't know, you know, where it just doesn't get on and you have to work with it and figure it out, things are out of focus. I wanted something that was just made for the telescope, plug and play, screws on. I think this kind of fit the bill and the fact that it's made for this telescope is great. Also F5.6 is awesome. I think it's a nice compromise. If you were to get down to F4, you would have a much heavier telescope. The dedicated reducer does cost $200 more, but I mean, it should be a given that you get this with the telescope, especially if you're doing astrophotography. If you're doing visual astronomy, you probably don't need it, but you, sh you should definitely get it. Okay, here's another one. So the telescope weighs roughly 13 pounds. I mean, this is, this is a somewhat important feature. It's lower weight compared to its peers for sure. You know, if you look at some of the other telescopes that are in its range, they weigh a lot more. Now, the reason why the weight is important is because you're able to get it on a lower capacity mount, like an HEQ5 or an AM3. In my case, well, it goes right on my AM5 without the need for a counterweight. It actually was, it, it was really a requirement that, the that whatever telescope that I bought, it didn't require a counterweight. So the whole thing comes in at about 20 pounds right now. So. It has enough clearance uh, on my AM5 to go on without the counterweight. So lastly, we got, um, and I don't know if this is really a thing, but it has pretty decent glass. You know, the glass is not specified by astronomics, but you know, I've read online that it's equivalent to the FPL 53 glass that's found in a lot of higher end telescopes. So it has good glass and oh, and the build quality. This thing, it's built like a rock. I mean, it really is, it's built like a rock. There is no plastic here whatsoever. So I wouldn't worry about the build quality. Lastly, the price and value. Okay, it is probably one of the cheapest telescopes in its class. It's priced, you know, anywhere from 1200 to 1500, depending on if you get it on sale. And I'm gonna say it's an excellent value for the money. For 100 to 130 millimeter telescopes range, uh, you know, usually from like 1400 for the AT, but you could look at it maybe even $6,000 for a stellar view 130 millimeter telescope. In my opinion, the AT-115 is just, it's a great value. I wouldn't say it's a cheap telescope. I would just say it's a really good value. You know, for less than half the cost of premium brands like William Optics, Stellar View, or Skywatchers Expre, which all go for about $3,000, uh, you get a telescope that's, okay, this is my opinion, 90% of what they are. And if it doesn't, you know, it doesn't come with premium glass, it has minimal accessories, 
and you gotta buy the fill flattener. But at the end of the day, this is so worth it because when you add all those things, even if you buy nice accessories and everything else, you're never even gonna get up to the $3,000 price tag of one of the more premium telescopes. Okay, let's take a look at some of the picks I've taken. I think most of these have come out pretty good. Of course, I think they came out good because they're my photos. Uh, so I just want to talk a little bit about the equipment that I used for these photos. I used a ZWO ASI 533mm mono camera. An Antlia 3, I used Antlia 3 nanometer narrowband filters. An Antlia LRGBV color filters. Well, and I used an ASI Air. <laughs> but I guess that's not really relevant to my photo quality. But I'll tell you something that is relevant to the photo quality. My sky quality. And my sky quality, I live here. Believe it or not, this is New Jersey and I live about 14 miles from uh, New York City. The sky quality, I don't think you could really, see, yeah, you could see the sky behind me. Well, it's bad, it's not great. So uh, it's about a, a Bortle eight, nine, somewhere kind of in between there. I think I'm actually in the Bortle nine zone. Uh, so yeah, it's not a great sky quality. So lastly, I processed all of these in PixInsight. I do have a PixInsight and tour tutorial that I'm gonna link down in the description. Also, I'm gonna link it right up here uh, if you wanna learn how to process narrowband images in PixInsight. I don't have a tutorial right now about how to process galaxies and broadband images, but hoping to have one uh, sometime in the future. Let's start the slideshow. Let's take a look over all the images and, you know, leave a comment, tell me what you think, and I'll see you in a bit. So we went through the picks, we went through its specs, we went through just about everything that this 
baby has. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I think it's a workhorse of a telescope. I think it takes amazing pictures. And most importantly, for anybody who's looking to buy this, it's really affordable. I mean, that's a, how many times can I say this? It's a great value. So should you buy it? Well, that's ultimately up to you. If you're looking for a second telescope as your first one was a, uh, a short refractor like mine's was, I, I have a Red Cat 51. Uh, this is a great second telescope. I mean, it really is. But you know, if you're a seasoned veteran who's gone through, you know, who knows how many telescopes, you've owned Stellar Views, you own William Optics, <laughs> this is probably not the telescope for you. And you probably know that already. You're probably not even watching this video. So for every, anybody who's watched this video, I hope it's helped. And if you're looking to buy this telescope, I'd say just go get it. Really, just go get it. Just one more thing I wanna mention. I love doing astrophotography and I love making these videos. So if you wanna hear more from me, subscribe. That's all. Clear skies and see you soon.